Hi everyone, Angie Hempel here with the Judah channel. And this audio recording is to introduce you to the Realizing Enlightenment chart. And this is a tool that we've developed here for you in order to locate where you are in your current state of consciousness, in your, in your growth, and map out where you're headed towards an enlightenment and have some sense of where you're going in this kind of mystical, uh, up and down sort of journey that we have in spiritual growth. And so at any given moment of time, you should be able to reference this chart, find where you are in the moment, and then begin to move yourself up in consciousness through awareness, through self-inquiry, through meditation. And so I want to just explain the chart to you, some of the broad concepts, and then maybe some more specific ones so that you'll have a good sense of how to use it for yourself as a tool. So the first thing I want to say is because you see there the seven chakras and you likely have some or maybe a lot of insight or information into the chakras, I want you to be sure that you don't let that familiarity with it cause you to tune out or go unconscious because the things that are here on this map are far broader than just the chakras. It's insight on how to move you all the way to enlightenment. And so the chakras are important. They are an important part of what you're going to see here, but don't tune it out because of the familiarity that you have with it. Okay. So these chakras, we're going to think of them not just as chakras in the body, energy centers in the body, but we're going to think of them like a ladder or steps from where you are, from your the most basic kind of human experience that you could have as an unconscious person to an enlightened person. So w broadly, when you look at the chart, the red ray uh, for unenlightened or unconscious persons could represent the very bottom of human experience shame, misery, feeling suicidal, feeling blame, having death wishes, um, not wanting to live anymore. Um, this is the realm of also serial killers and people that have, you know, seem to have no sense of morality or consciousness at all. So that would be the red ray or the bottom, the floor of unconsciousness. And the violet ray would be the top of human experience. And, and it is full blown enlightenment, like Jesus, like the Buddha, and many other enlightened beings. So I want you to look at these rays here as a process of evolution from the bottom, zero, red ray, all the way to the top, which is enlightenment in the violet ray. So the bottom three, red ray, orange ray, and yellow ray, these represent our human experience our human experience, and it's common to all of us on the planet. The green ray is that kind of mystical heart space where we begin to wake up to the fact that we are spiritual beings, that we're more than just humans having a human experience that die and go in the ground and rot. We are spiritual entities having a human experience. So the green ray is transitional and it's transformational. And then the blue, indigo, and violet ray, those are the areas in which we are experiencing ourselves as spiritual beings. And that's where, um, where the realms of enlightenment reside. So in those bottom three rays, red ray, orange ray, yellow ray, if we're still unconscious, then our life will be negatively oriented. We'll be living in survival mode. We'll be dominated by lack, by suffering, by negative experiences. We will, our, the mantras of our life will be something like, life is doing stuff to me and I have no control over it. I'm afraid and I want to control. I'm sad and I'm suffering. There's lack and limitation all around me. So now once a person has reached a more enlightened state, these three rays, the red, orange, and yellow ray, will be more, they will be sanctified, they'll be purified, they'll be open to life. And so 
for an enlightened person, those three lower rays look like an enjoyment of being human, of the senses, of being grounded, of enjoying sexuality, of being safe, of being protected in the world, of having a freedom of expressing creativity and desire and following passions and, and uh, managing the self, the self and the desire of the self being open to life and positively oriented. But until a person has reached those higher enlightened states, those bottom three rays will feel really super, super negative. And so anyone who is in the red, orange, or yellow ray consistently is going to have a negative orientation to life. So they might pretend to be positive. They might pretend to be happy. They might put on a happy face, but inside they're really suffering. So in those realms, those are the realms uh, that we call the 3D or the third dimension. So people living in these three lower rays really identify strongly with the body, with their own physical body, and with their own physical surroundings, their house, their car, where they live, um, what their name is, what their background and environment is, and so on. They believe that they are the body. And they very, can be very focused on the past, the suffering that has brought them to where they are, and very focused on material things that they can see, touch, taste, feel, and so on. And they are still in a mindset or a belief that the material realm, the 3D realm, is going to provide the safety, security, contact that they need to be okay So these three lower rays are the realm of unconsciousness. And so to be in one of these three rays consistently is going to feel like being stuck, like suffering, like lack, poverty, limitation, like um, not being able to make it in life. It feels uh, like contracting, like clenching. So let's talk specifically about these three. The red ray, in this ray... A person might feel really miserable, really overcome with shame and humiliation. They may have a death wish, which they may or may not be conscious of. They might be suicidal. They might um, wish that something would happen, a disease or something. This is on an unconscious level now. They might wish that something would happen to just let them off the hook and get them out of this life because they are experiencing life as being meaningless and hopeless. So these folks are really in dire straits. They do not feel safe. They do not feel protected. They do not feel loved. And everything they're, that they're doing is to try to connect themselves to, to safety and to being okay. This is also the place of a lot of sexual dysfunction or bondage or addiction in, in the sexual realm or, res- or undue, uncanny restraint, or lack of freedom in sexuality. And so a person who's consistently in this red ray will feel like a victim of life. They will feel like life is doing things to them. They, their mantra is, I can't, I can't, I can't because. And even if you supply, let's say, some food or shelter for them, or in some way meet a need for them, They will still have an underlying feeling that I can't, I can't. And they will give you another reason why they're, why they're stuck and why um, they're going to continue to suffer. So their strong belief is I lack and fill in the blank. It could be anything that they lack. I lack uh, education. I lack a job. I lack support. um, I lack love and therefore I suffer. So they see others people place and things as the source for them and that those sources have been withheld from them and and they do not feel any power to create a life for themselves a life with meaning and hope now as I continue on describing these different rays and these different levels of consciousness what I want you to understand is this principle that I call the emotional set point 
you could also call it a spiritual set point. Basically, our emotional life is our spiritual life. That's something that we really need to grasp and understand in order to grow. Our emotional life is our spiritual life. So every one of us has an emotional set point. And this is similar to a thermostat on your um, on your house so or your apartment wherever you live so you always set the temperature to uh, the temperature that feels just right to you maybe it's 69 maybe it's 74 you know we're all a little different but we have a temperature that just feels just right and so whether it's super hot outside or really really cold no matter what the environment is the set point stays the same and so what it does is it causes the atmosphere around us to gravitate back to that set point no matter what's going on in the environment so this is the way I want you to look at this chart each of us has an emotional set point and so no matter what is going on in life we will tend to gravitate back to that set point even if things go really well for us for a while or perhaps things go really bad, there's some tragic things or traumas, we'll still tend to gravitate back to our set point. So unless we're really conscious and aware, we can't move that set point. And in, in truth, most people, uh, many people I would say, make little progress in their conscious awareness. Many people will I will say most people will die having maybe only moved up a little bit within the ray of their emotional set point. And some who are very determined, who are intentional about growth, might move up one ray or two rays or three rays in their lifetime. Now is it possible to move all the way up to enlightenment from the bottom to the top in one lifetime? Absolutely, it is, impos it is possible to move from the red ray to the violet ray. There are people who have done it, for sure. And those are our heroes in the realm of um, spiritual life and work. We call them enlightened beings. But for most people, unless there's some real help, support, information, and consciousness, they will move very little on this chart in a given lifetime. And that's why we perhaps live many, many, many lifetimes, is in order to make progression from this red to violet ray. So going back to the emotional set point, I'll give you an example. Most of my adult life, from about the time of 16 onwards, my emotional set point was sad. It was sad. So I was in that red ray. Uh, so even if things went well for me, maybe I graduated from college, got my master's degree, I felt happy for a little while, and then I would just gravitate back down towards sad. Or maybe I met the love of my life or something exciting would happen for me. I'd make a record and travel the world. I would be happy for a little while, but I would still gravitate back down towards sad. So my emotional set point was this depressed sort of state. So in the work that you're doing with Judah, everything we do is to shift your set point up. To shift your set point up. And you will feel this begin to happen to you. Your natural state of being will shift more towards positive orientations. And once we get you in that green ray, in that heart space, then you're, you're right in the realm that you can begin re dropping over into an enlightenment and high spiritual states and experiences. All right, so going back to the red ray, um, this is a place of deep unconsciousness. When you encounter people in this realm, just understand that they may not be able to understand higher spiritual concepts and that's okay they're feeling really victimized so love them love them love them love them love them and understand that when someone is struggling just to pay their bills or to eat or to stay alive then they're likely now it's not always the case but it's likely that they're not in a place 
to do intense spiritual work. The work for them in the realm of consciousness is to become aware that they can create something different for themselves, that they can create their own reality. Let's talk about the orange ray. In the orange ray, one may be feeling uh, very a lot of fear. And this fear that they feel will be constantly tempting them to try to control their life. So the fear is an absence of love. People whose emotional set point is in the orange range ha may have had moments of experiencing unconditional love, but for the most part, they have not had enough of an experience of love to be okay, to feel okay. So they're very, very uncomfortable inside, anxious and afraid. And so this fear is an egoic conditioning and it drives them to want to fix their life, change their life, alter their external environment, do anything that they can to avoid pain or to create more pleasure for themselves. So in this area, there's a lot of grief. There can be a lot of trauma. There can be apathy, regret, despondency, depression. But the overall characteristic feeling of the orange ray is fear. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself in this orange ray, know that you're afraid of something, which is a feeling of a lack of love. And so that's where you want to have the awareness that you are love, you embody love, your higher self is overcome with effortless love at all times. So because that is the higher truth, you know that when you're feeling that you're stuck in this orange ray, that you're believing a lie of some sort. And this lie is causing you to be afraid. So releasing control here. Can I let go of wanting, needing, and needing to control? And so releasing control when you're in the orange ray will help you to come up into the green ray. Releasing control. Mm-hmm letting go. All right, let's talk about yellow ray. The yellow ray is where we're beginning to own our own personal power. This might be the area of consciousness in which you begin to be attracted to law of attraction teachings. And you begin to understand that you're cr the creator of your own reality, that you have personal power, and you can use that power to pursue your desires, to uh, shift and change the kind of person that you are, to create more happiness for yourself, to influence your environment or change your relationships uh, or different aspects of your life. This might be the ray in which um, you're making vision boards. A lot of times people in this ray will begin to be attracted to channelers like Abraham Hicks and this can be a really valuable time in which you're beginning to own your own power and separate out your power from others. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in this yellow ray and you're still very unconscious, you may feel a lot of powerlessness and you may feel a lot of anger. So if you encounter someone or you're encountering yourself as being a really angry person, and you don't want to be an angry person, but this is how you're responding to life, it could be because you're in this yellow ray. And so the anger arises when we believe that there's something that will make us happy, but we're being blocked from that. And so the anger comes out of frustration of being blocked from what will make us happy. So anger is also based on a lie because the lie is this, that if we have a certain thing or certain relationship or certain mm, environment or, or a certain experience would come to us, then we would finally be happy. So the belief here is I believe blank, whatever it is, a new mate, a new job, a different car, I believe blank will finally make me happy. And so when we're blocked from achieving or experiencing that thing, we feel really angry inside. 
So yellow ray also can be a good space where awakening begins, as I said, and you begin experiencing yourself as able to create your own reality and begin to own your own power. So for people that are, let's say, really wanting to live in the heart space, the green ray, really wanting to experience love and being loved, they want to be more loving people, perhaps they want to have higher experiences in the blue indigo violet ray they want to hear angels they want to channel they want to have clairvoyant gifts and so on but if i'm talking to those folks and i realize that they're in a lot of bondage in a relationship or in let's say in religion or in their work or they've somehow given up their personal power to others then I know they're not ready for those experiences they're asking for. Can they have them? Sure, absolutely they can. But they can't necessarily sustain uh, higher levels of consciousness until they have mastered this yellow ray of owning their own power. So there are occasionally folks that I meet who have um, higher consciousness experiences such as channeling or clairvoyant visions, remote viewing, those types of things, psychic gifts. But if they have not cleared and stabilized those lower chakras, then I've found that those gifts will typically cause them to suffer because they're opening up themselves into higher realms, but because there's still a lot of fear and anger and lack and limitation going on in, in their person, then um, it's just not a stabilized and positive experience for them. Okay, so this yellow ray, you're getting really close to 4D, maybe entering the 4D realm. So the 4D realm is the realm of growth in your thoughts and emotions. Once you get into this realm, and I would say most people are probably in America today, perhaps in some other cultures as well, European cultures and other cultures that I won't mention here, but in many modern day cultures, people, if they have their basic uh, needs met for food, shelter, clothing, safety, then they have the capacity to begin working in this 4D realm of thoughts and emotions. And so yellow, green ray are, primarily the green ray, are the ones that are entering this 4D experience. And at this point, you will begin to stop identifying so much with yourself as a body, and you'll event, identify more uh, yourself as being your thoughts and emotions, your personality, your character traits, your skills, your talents, all the things that make you unique. So 4D is the realm of psyche. And in the 4D, you may tend to be more focused on the future and how to create a positive future for yourself that's different from your past. So in the 4D realm, you may be kind of bouncing back and forth between this positive and negative orientation, trying to sort out the past and create a new future for you. You may not really have that sense of being so much in the now. You're, instead, you're trying to bridge your past to a new and brighter future. And the green ray in this 4D realm is really, really important because it's the moment in which you, the time span in which you begin to bridge between your human and your spiritual experience. So in the green ray, that's your heart. You might begin to experience some energy movement in your heart. And you're beginning to wake up. You might even begin to have some, some occasional uh, spiritual experiences uh, and, and more mystic experiences. And so this is a really beautiful time. You're learning in this space to let go of what's not serving you. Your eyes are being opened. You're becoming aware of what's not been working for you. You're becoming aware of the lack and limitation of those lower rays and how they've caused you to suffer. In this green ray space, you may start to really detest when you feel overcome with fear or anger or victimization. Or you may become aware, oh, gee, I'm playing the victim in this situation. Or 
or I'm afraid in this situation and my, my fear is irrational. There must be something more behind this. Or um, I'm, I'm very angry in this situation, but I don't want to be angry anymore. And I'm aware that I'm the one who is attracting this situation. So the green ray is all about awareness. It's where your awakening really solidly begins. And in this space, the way you occupy this space fully, the way it becomes your new set point, is you begin to be okay with whatever happens. You, you come into a place of neutrality, of, of trusting in life, trusting yourself more, trusting life more, releasing things, forgiving everything, letting things go. And so you're, this is the realm of self-help, personal growth. This might be the, the season of life where you want to go to a psychologist or a counselor or a coach. In this realm, you tend to look at yourself as having positive at- attributes and negative attributes. And you're kind of sifting and sorting those things out and deciding how you can be something other than what you are. So in the green ray, you're aware that your thoughts are shaping your life. You begin to develop this awareness. Now you may not have um, mastery. You won't have mastery over it at this point, but you will begin to see that it is uh, important and formative to the life that you're living. So the green ray If you really want to get really solidly into this green ray space, which is the heart space, uh, the best tool that I know of for that is called the Sedona Method. And we use it a lot in the Judah channel. Um, I have my own unique way. Judah has their own unique way of, of expressing this Sedona method through me. So I have adapted it. I wouldn't say it's, it's completely true to the original method, but it definitely has been informed by the Sedona method. We call it the getting free game in the Judah channel. And you'll likely, if you hang out with us, spend a lot of time working on this green ray area with this Sedona method. Now, if you want to go the, the original sources are about 40 years old, so this method's been around a long time. There's a lot of knockoffs of the Sedona method that I may or may not recommend. But I would say if you want to get it from the horse's mouth in the purest possible form, in my opinion, the only person currently that is a very pure student of this method and delivers it in a really pure way is Hale Dwoskin, D-W-O-S-K-I-N. So I highly recommend anything that he has to offer. So if you work with his work, what the effect of this work has is it will lift you out of the red ray, orange ray, and yellow ray experiences that you're having of lack and limitation, and it will move you solidly into the green ray in those areas. So for example, you might, let's say we all have different areas that we have more consciousness in than others. So you might be highly conscious in in areas of health and have very low consciousness in the realm of finance. You might have very high levels of consciousness in the realm of, uh, let's say, relationships and very low levels of consciousness in the realm of, say, sexuality, or, or, or actually if you had high levels of consciousness in, in relationships, that would include sexuality. But you can see, get the gist of what I'm saying here. So let's say, for instance, um, that you have a um, really good handle on one red ray issue, which would be finances. Let's say you're very abundant, uh, that you don't have to worry about anything in the realm of providing for yourself and your family. But maybe you have some sexual addiction that haunts you from time to time, let's say. That's another red ray issue. So if you work with the Sedona method on that issue, it will begin to allow you to release it and to come up into the green ray in that area. Coming more from your heart space, from clearing, 
Okay, good. All right. So in Green Ray, you're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to have some days you're going to be positively oriented, others you'll be negatively oriented. In some areas you'll be positively oriented, and in other specific areas you'll still have hang-ups or difficulties. And this is the way of the Green Ray. And so this is the way of the Green Ray. But love this Green Ray. This is your heart space. And this is the bridge between your human experience and your higher level spiritual experience as an enlightened being. And it's very important. So anytime you're struggling with anything, a, an easy trick that I use to bring myself into this Green Ray area is just to put my hand on my heart and close my eyes. Hand on the heart, closing the eyes. So one of the things I want to say about this Green Ray area is that when you are solidly in this heart space area, when it's become your new emotional set point, you will experience yourself as a very loving person. You will be loving yourself. You will be accepting yourself. You will be very loving and accepting of other people. Even if um, circumstances happen that set you off or there's difficulty or challenges, maybe even really difficult challenges like lawsuits or divorces or things like that, even in the midst of that, if you are solidly in this green ray space, you will have this sense that you love the other, that you love them, that you forgive them. And it will be very heartfelt, very heartfelt. And so a person in this area of consciousness begins to be able to counterbalance or negate the negative energies of tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. So don't underestimate the power here of living from your heart. You are literally changing the planet just from your state of being when you're living from the heart. So in this ray, you become aware that you're more than just your thoughts. You're more than just your emotions. Those are fleeting things. You can shift and shape your reality. And so in this space, the primary task of the Green Ray is to accept that you are the creator of your own reality. Okay, let's talk about the Blue Ray. So when you cross, when you're crossing from the Green Ray to the Blue Ray, you are entering into the first stage of enlightenment. When you're solid, stable, emotional set point, Green Ray, then you are able to experience the higher realms of yourself as a spiritual being. So crossing from green to blue is that area where you are stepping into divinity, you're stepping into an experience of real, true enlightenment. So in the blue ray, you begin to embody the wisdom of the divine. You will begin to have a vision for service to humanity. And you will, your, your message, or when I say message, I mean the reason why you're here, what you're here to do, what your soul wants to accomplish, not, not the person, not your personality, but your soul, your divine parts, this will begin to flow out to others very naturally, very naturally, very naturally. So here is where you begin engaging with your higher self and your higher self begins to take the the driver's seat and take the wheel of your life and begins to express itself through all that you're doing this might be a stage in which you begin to shift out of serving others serving other companies serving serving other systems serving other um you know uh, negatively oriented or lower energy, um, you know, lower chakra um, entities in the world. This might be a point where you have to get out of certain types of work and into higher consciousness work because you must, at this point, you feel compelled to be true to your soul and the divine purpose of your soul. And that's really unfolding for you. So, the blue ray is where you become a messenger of wisdom, of light, of love, not necessarily with your words, but in some manner your life is becoming a messenger. 
in the indigo ray this is where your third eye begins opening oh let me back up um, so in the blue ray it, when this area begins to open you may feel fire in your throat also as you're transitioning into the blue ray you may have experiences sometimes where you feel like a choking sensation and if that's happening that is angels and source removing restraints around your message center and breaking off controls so that you can be true to your message now as you go into the indigo ray this is where your third eye opens Jesus called this the single eye he said that if your single eye is filled with light your whole body will be filled with light so in this area you may begin to have some flashes of white light or what is called a kundalini uh, awakening or arising experience and so here you may begin to have gifts of clear clear audience clear sentience clear cognizance you just may simply know a thing and it might not make sense to your mind but you just know that it's true you're very connected to source information you can sense and hear messages telepathically from angels from interstellar beings from the Holy Spirit you can tap into the Akashic records and receive information about uh, your past present future lives and others as well so you begin to experience yourself as tapped in connected resourced if you're solidly oriented in this ray if this is your permanent um, or for the for the time being set point then uh, you're open to all information and there's really no limitation on the channeled information that you can receive you have access to all of the information of heaven and earth and the universe so if you want a list of more specific physical symptoms and things that can happen to you as your indigo ray is opening you can find that in my book the answer to all your questions the first book of Judah and then the top ray this violet ray is extremely rare for someone to completely master and make this their their top and permanent emotional set point but it can absolutely happen and it is going to be on the increase and so folks who reach this violet ray as their their definitive set point they are impacting millions and millions and millions of people on the planet with just their presence so these enlightened beings like Jesus and the Buddha and and Ramana Maharshi and many many others Eckhart Tolle they are experience themselves as a, in a state of being as God in service to all so these folks don't care anything about uh, reputation they don't care about money they don't care about they don't treat their family members as special or different from anyone else these people exist uh, almost they have very little person their their personality at this point exists only to express the divine and it's all in service to the divine they lack nothing they experience the perfection of all things they stay in a permanent and immovable state of peace and there's really nothing that can knock them out of this state they are experiencing themselves as the divine a person in this realm you could nail them on the cross and they would still love you and forgive you right you could steal their last dollar you could burn their home to the ground and whatever other manner of harm could come to them and they will still be at peace they will still be in a space of love a person in this area they don't need to um, create anything in their reality as different than what it already is they are simply okay with everything as it is so in these upper realms the blue ray indigo ray and violet ray people will tend to drop um, teachings around of law of attraction they will drop it in favor of 
it's not that it's not valid or true still, but people in this in these upper rays will instead just relinquish themselves to the flow of life. They will not fe feel compelled to shape or shift what is. They're okay with what is. They flow with what is. They're experiencing everything as a yes, even things that we might think of as being negative, um, like war or disease or things like that. They, they understand that all of these things are a plan from the divine and they embrace all of it and experience all of it from this perspective of wholeness and oneness. So oneness, you know, in these higher realms, these blue, indigo, and violet rays, people look at the other and they see a part of themselves. And their orientation is always positive. They are not any more polarized towards anything negative at all. They don't experience anything as being negative. Okay, that's a lot. I hope that's of some help to you. So, or I take a look, you know, at these. Sense where you are, and then and then sense how to move yourself up the chart. And if you're ever in doubt, I would say go back to the Sedona method, the getting free game that we work with in the Judah channel. Bring yourself into this green ray space there with that. And then from there, all the spiritual gifts of the higher three rays are open to you. All of them will instinctively and naturally open. So if you're mucking around in the red, orange, and yellow ray in one or more areas of your life, work on this Sedona method to get yourself in the green ray in that area. And then understand that once you're in this green ray, the top, the blue, indigo, and violet, those three rays are like a flower that opens very naturally. No one goes to a flower and forces the petals open, right? no need to do that. You know that in due time the flower will bloom all on its own. So if you have a desire for spiritual gifts to channel, to see visions, to hear angels, to talk to interstellar beings, to experience ecstatic states of bliss, know that those are the natural flowering of solidly living in the green ray heart space. And so you can't get the cart before the horse. Well, you can try, but it won't be safe and it won't be comfortable and it won't be profitable for you to work in the indigo, violet ray, and so on. If you're still, if you know in your heart that you're still struggling with these um, lower, lower uh, rays of the red, orange, and yellow. And another last important thing I would say is when you work with this chart, don't judge yourself at all. This is not a race. You know, this is not, um, no one's timing you to see how fast you're going to, to make this journey from red to violet, right? Don't judge yourself. Accept yourself exactly where you are. If you're in the orange ray today and you're feeling super afraid about something, love yourself. Love yourself. Give yourself a hug. Be a good mother or father to yourself. Um, and, and just be okay with being what you are. Because if you're resisting what you are, then that is what is going to keep you stuck in a negative orientation. So just to allow yourself to be what you are is the first step towards being able to, to move upwards in your consciousness. So I wanted, the last thing I'll tell you is that our True You Accelerator course, everything in the course has been professionally calibrated as being in the blue, indigo, and violet rays. So this course has been very specifically designed to lift your emotional set point up out of those lower rays into the green ray and then to, f to fix you solidly in these higher realms of enlightenment. So as we calibrated and as we channeled and I kept going back 
to our friends who are professionals and also to Judah to double check and check and double check again the material of the course, we found that 85% of the issues that are troubling you and plaguing you can be resolved with your commitment to the material of this course, to applying it to your life. And the other 15 can be in, uh, very much um, eased and lessened by your work in the course. And it is very possible for you to reach enlightenment, the blue, indigo, and violet ray through doing this coursework. Judah has assured us that it is a definitive path to enlightenment. So love yourself. Be patient with yourself when you're in those negatively oriented spaces. Know that it's just temporary and that you're just visiting those spaces in order to release them and get free. And you are moving upwards into these newer, higher realms of enlightenment. It is your spiritual birthright and it is your inheritance as a child of God to be an enlightened being. And if you want that, if it's important to you, if you have an intensity, a passion of desire to know and experience God and to know and experience yourself as God, you can do it and you can do it through this course. And we are here to love you. We're loving you all along the way and sending you our, our best wishes and intentions for your journey.